last week then, last week we saw something of the trouble Samson got into with women. There was that prostitute down in Gaza, shouldn't have gone there. There was Delilah. But Samson's been down this road before. There was that Philistine woman he tried to marry before, and so on. His, his life is characterised by the fact that he has a taste for what's bad for him in women. Now, he could have been a woman with a taste for what's bad for her in men. We're not saying that, but we're saying this area of his life is not under control. And he's got fairly well on in his life and it's still under control. <coughs> and that's a bad thing. In spite of his phenomenal physical strength, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he didn't have the discipline to say no either to himself or to these women. And also, he seems to have loved to play with fire a little bit. He seems to have loved playing with fire. In all of this, Samson is a living picture of the weakness of the people of Israel in their flirting with the culture and therefore the religion of the Philistines. Drawn astray by wayward tastes, unable to say no, either to their own wayward tastes or to Philistinism. That is a word. Philistinism. And with a tendency to think that they could play with fire without burning their fingers. Let's be quite straightforward. You cannot play with fire without burning your fingers. You can't walk through a muddy field without getting crap on your boots. Why do we think you can? Samson's already proved otherwise on a number of occasions. And is now a blinded prisoner down in Gaza and shackled in the temple of Dagon as a trophy. What a picture. When the people saw him, they praised their God. Judges 16 verse 21. Saying, our oh God has delivered our enemy into our hands. The one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. Our God, Dagon. As triumph. Dagon has been shown to be the serial god and chief deity of the Philistines. They were more than a little bit keen on him. And the very sight of Samson is what causes the Philistines to praise Dagon. The very sight of Samson, God's champion, shackled and blinded, causes them to praise their pagan deity. Because, they said, Dagon has delivered their enemy Samson into their hands and they gathered to celebrate that. That's why they're having this festival. How does it feel when your personal failures bring disgrace on the name of your God and give rise to the exaltation of idolatry? Can you see where Samson is? Can you see the disillusionment and the disappointment and the despair? Can you see that? It's possible for Christian leadership in old age to be characterised by disappointment and disillusionment. Often because of weakness and sin. How does it feel when your personal failure is being disgraced on the name of your God and give rise to the exaltation of idolatry? How does it feel? Oh yes, your God has the power to organise things otherwise, but you just couldn't say no to yourself or to someone else that you grew infatuated with who's betrayed and has destroyed you. A leader of Israel? Ha! Samson. He knows he's been very foolish. We often do have to, don't we? And his situation is utterly desperate as blind Samson is called upon to be taunted at the revels associated with his pagan deity and to show the supreme superiority of Dagon to Israel's God, as they suppose. A supposed superiority. 
which only arose because his bedfellow's bitter treachery got Samson delivered over to the Philistines in the first place. And the Philistines were enjoying it and they were celebrating it large. 